Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're painting abstract wild hair number two, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Cabernet, so let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. You could certainly switch up the size if you're painting along with me, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, magenta, deep yellow, phthalo green, cobalt blue, and Mars Black, and of course you can switch up the colors if you'd like to. For my tools today, I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I also have a number eight round brush, and I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. If you're painting with me, you'll also need a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I do provide you with a couple of additional resources down below this video in the description. You'll find a link where you could purchase the same paint kit that I'm using um, from the large canvas to the paint and the brushes and all that good stuff. And there's also a link for you to download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go along. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting our background. I'm gonna be using my big uh, bristle brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are white, magenta, yellow, green, and blue. So the only color I'm not gonna be using is black and you can certainly have fun with this and make this as colorful as you want. But what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing kind of a striping formation. Um, I'm going to be using mostly white as I go through this process, but I'll also be using a little bit of the other colors as well. Um, I'm not going to be washing my brush throughout this process. I'm going to be blending my colors on my canvas. Um, and you can certainly, as we're going through this process, if you want yours brighter or more intense, you can certainly back off on the white if you want to. Um, and how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to start at one end. I'm going to be doing it diagonal and just go right to the other end. At any time you feel that you might want to wash your brush, if it's too overloaded, feel free to do so. This is your painting. Just have fun during the process. So I'm starting with white and a tiny bit of yellow on my brush. And I'm just gonna start down here in the bottom left-hand corner and I'm just going diagonal. Once I have uh, as much of that on there as I want, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more yellow to get this a little bit more intense as it's coming through this, this area. Now I'm gonna go pick up white with a little bit of my pink on my brush and you'll see it immediately turns into a pretty soft color. Um, and again, you can make this as bright or as dark as you want. Feel free to adjust these colors however you see fit. I'm gonna go into white with a little bit of green is gonna be my next color combination. And I'm just having fun with the order of these colors. You could certainly switch up the order if you want to. So I'm picking up white with a teeny bit of my green on there. I also am gonna overlap some of my colors. So you'll see as I go through this process, I might back in to a previous color. So, you know, just do whatever is coming naturally to you. If you want your colors more vibrant or more subtle, have fun with it. It is, you know, your painting. Feel free to get these colors to do whatever you'd like them to do. And I'm gonna go into white and blue is my next color combination. So again, mostly white with just a teeny tiny bit of blue on my brush. And now you're gonna see it's gonna probably look a little oceanic, a little beachy as we get into the um, white and blue because it's sitting next to this green, which is really cool. And then I'm gonna almost like reverse, I don't know, maybe I'll go into the pink next. Maybe it'll make it look, or the magenta, maybe it'll get it to look a little purpley. But again, have fun with this. You do whatever color order you want. Maybe I'll do a little bit more blue and white because I think I want this to turn a little bit more, yeah, there we go, a little bit more blue on me. Um, again, 
this is your painting it's abstract it's supposed to be fun and just intuitive whatever is coming to you naturally whatever your brush wants to do and whatever you're visually having a fun time looking at hmm i think i'm gonna go pink next so white with just a little bit of the the magenta on my brush and then maybe i'll do a little of the yellow next but again have fun if you feel like your brush is a little bit too overloaded with one of the colors and it's not coming out the way that you want like it's not pink enough for you or it's not doing what you want you can certainly wash and dry your brush and and feel free to start uh, you know with a fresh brush so now I'm going white with a teeny bit of my yellow on there and again if you wanted your colors more vibrant feel free you know pick up globs of that color if you want to we are gonna have a very wild hair person on our canvas so if you want your colors to be more wild than mine you are more than welcome to do so so I've got some oh I think I want a little more yellow on there a little more yellow as we go into this corner and then let's see, oh, I think I'm gonna do green next. So I've got white and yellow. Now I'm gonna go white with a teeny bit of green to finish off this top corner up and through here. And then we are gonna be switching brushes to our small brush. So once you've got these pretty colors on here and you have painted it as much as you want, you can wash and dry. No, actually, not wash and dry, we're gonna be using, you can put this brush away, but we're gonna be using that small brush for the next step. Before we go on to the next step, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your canvas is dry, so you can either sit and weave for it, or you can pull out a blow dryer and get it done faster. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the silhouette of our head and shoulder, so of the body. So I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint and I'm gonna give you a couple of markers and we'll just make something that resembles a body. Um, and just keep in mind, this is abstract, doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> so we're just gonna have fun and hopefully we'll get a head to look like it's a little bit sideways. So I'm putting black paint on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the bottom of my canvas in the center and I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a mark and I'm gonna actually make myself a diagonal line from that point. It doesn't have to be super diagonal, but just a little bit coming up, maybe about two inches or so, or so something like that. Now I'm gonna come over onto the left hand bottom of my canvas and I'm gonna come in maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and I'm gonna make myself another mark. I'm gonna do another diagonal line like this but I want it to be a little bit taller. So you want it to come up maybe about two and a half, three inches and just in a little bit. It doesn't have to be um, perfect and you're gonna kind of curve it like it's a, like it's a shoulder, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these two to connect and you wanna make sure that they're rounded cause they're, they're the top of your shoulders. So something like this, I'm just gonna come down here. I want to make sure that I have a rounded shoulder there and I'm just gonna get these two to connect. Now I need to give myself a neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of figure out where that center point is and I'm gonna to come to the right about halfway between the corner of that shoulder and um, my finger point, and I'm gonna make myself a curved line that looks something like this. You want it to kind of naturally go into the shoulder like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come about halfway between my finger and that shoulder, and this is where the other side of the neck is gonna come, but it because the head's gonna be tilted, we want this to be more of a slow curve, something like that. And you can get it to go a little bit higher than, um, than the one on the right. Now I've got to put myself a head on there. Now be mindful that your head is going to be hidden by a whole bunch of hair. So don't be concerned if it's not totally perfect at this point. So we're just going to go for kind of like a circly oval kind of thing. Um, I want the, the top part of my head to be you know, kind of diagonal from here, something like that, and you can just kind of make yourself some kind of an oval, something like that. And again, doesn't even have to be perfect because we're gonna be hiding it with hair. And then I'm just gonna color the whole thing in with black paint and my small brush. 
So just getting this on here. And you can do a nice heavy coat. Black usually covers really nice and well. And if your head grows a little bit like mine just did, don't worry about it. <laughs> I just really want that. The biggest part is the um, direction of the neck and to make sure that the shoulders kind of look proportionate. Um, and then I'm just coloring it in black and we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step and you don't even have to wash it. So once you've got the head and shoulders painted in, you can just take a little break and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're making the silhouette for the hair. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. And I really want this to look like the person is flipping their head to the side. So I wanna make sure that the hair is in the correct motion. Um, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start about, about a, I don't know, maybe a third of the way up the head on the left hand side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to arc a piece of hair coming down like that and then on the right hand side I'm going to come directly across from that and I want the arc so this one went up and down this one's going to go down and up so right about at the same spot I'm going to come down and up now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in essence, kind of do a pinwheel around the head. And this doesn't have to be super long hair at this point. We're going to progressively get longer. So that way you kind of keep it in motion and it looks like messy hair. So what I'm going to do, oh, that looks kind of funny right now. It almost looks like some kind of alien with really long pointy ears coming out of it. So here we go. I'm going to just kind of use my brush and make like a pinwheel. So I'm going to keep going in this same curve around the head. Oh, it's gonna look like a, a fun mohawk by the time I'm, a, a profile of a mohawk by the time I'm done this step. And then once I've got this going, something like that. Now I'm just gonna progressively get longer. I want it to be super duper long on this side and then it's just gonna kind of flop over here. So again, you could really have yours um, whatever length that you want, but I do want to continue to keep the idea of it's coming from the head and just flipping up in that direction. And they don't all have to be perfectly in the same angle. You can certainly have some crossing over in a slightly different angle. That's going to make it look even messier and, and more wild and carefree. And I want it to kind of loop around up at the top and it's just going to kind of continue in this motion. This is in my head what it would be doing if it was naturally flipped. So that's that's the direction I'm going in. And I'm just gonna keep going until I've got what I feel to be enough um, hair on here. And I am leaving some peekaboo spots so you can see that color behind it. And But I am doing a lot of hair. So I've got you know, it coming really far over on this right hand side. I've got some stray pieces that are just kind of making their way out of the bunch. I definitely want to have some some messy ones over in through here. And, you know, so at times you might just slow down and just use the tip of your brush instead of using a really thick, heavy stroke. But I am um, reloading my brush often. So just know that I'm using a lot of paint on my brush, but sometimes I'm not pushing hard because I want skinnier pieces. But again, this is this is your wild hair person. You make it as full as you want it um, or as thin as you want it, totally up to you. And I'm gonna bring some of these pieces almost out to the edge of my canvas over here. And I'm just gonna keep kind of adding until I feel I've got enough. I mean, we are gonna be using some color on it in a little bit, so that's gonna certainly add to this funness. Um, but I definitely wanna make sure I've got some little straggler pieces coming out in through here. And you don't always have to start from here. I mean, you probably notice sometimes I'm just starting out in the middle of Never Never Land because there's, you know, they don't all have to connect to the head. This is, again, abstract. Maybe you have some pieces that are just, you know, breaking away from the pack or something, you know, just have fun with it. And again, I want some to be in a little bit different of a direction. I think this is looking pretty fun. I'm gonna put some more in through here 
make sure that it looks like these are all, you know, flipping in the right direction. So you can see I'm crossing some over here. So that way they look like they're, you know, at different lengths. So they don't all have to be the same length. I've got, yeah, this is fun. All right, so I think, I think I'm gonna call it on this step. I might do a couple more little pieces in through here. And then what are we gonna do next? We're gonna use this same brush for the next step, but you're definitely gonna wanna wash it and dry it. Yeah, well maybe a couple little, sorry. <laughs> I, sometimes I can't stop on these kind of on these kind of paintings because I want them to be so fun and energetic. Okay, that's all I'm doing. I'm moving on to the next step. So you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're gonna do for the next step is we are thinning out our paint a little bit for the next step. So what I'm gonna do is. Um, we're gonna be doing like a splattery kind of drippy step for the next step. So I want my paint a little bit thinner. I am using a student grade paint, which is already pretty thin, um, but you might be using a heavier bodied paint. So if yours is a little bit heavier or if you want it, um, you know, thinner, I'm just using water to thin mine out a little bit. So you can either spritz it with some water or just take your water cup that you were washing your brushes with. You could even use a little dirty water or a couple of drops of clean water. It's, you just need a couple of drops so it's not gonna matter. It's not really gonna change the color of your, your paint if, it's, if your paint water's dirty. And all you're gonna do is just kind of spin it around. We want that paint to be on the fluid side, but you don't want it to be super duper drippy. So I've got it thinner. So when I pull it up, it does kind of run off my, my brush a little bit. Um, but if you make it too thin, you can always just add some of the original paint back into it. Or if you, know, you want it thinner, add more water to it. So I'm just washing and drying my brush in between um, thinning out these colors. And again, I'm just adding a couple of drops of water, depending on how much um, paint you have on your palette. And you could make these colors lighter or darker, or you could, you know, do whatever you want to them. It's your painting. You feel free to, you know, mix about any colors that you want. But I am going to be using my green, yellow, pink, and white for my drippy colors. Um, you could certainly use your blue, you could use your black, you could, you know, make any combination thereof that you'd like to. Um, but once you've got these colors all nice and, and thinned out just a little bit, you're gonna wanna wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. I'm just thinning out. I got two more here to go. And again, you can get them as liquidy as you want. The more liquid you get them, the less control you'll have over where the paint goes when you go to um, apply it to the canvas. I got one more to go. And you can see my, my water's getting a little dirty here. No big deal. Just kind of adding it right in there. And then I am ready to go on to the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing splashes and scratches. <laughs> I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using all of my thinned out paint. And again, you could use whatever colors that you want. Um, my, uh, my main kind of objective here is I want a ton of movement in this hair region. So I'm gonna be, at times you'll see me flicking my brush. At times you'll see me tapping my brush. Sometimes I will just flick the little bristles to make smaller marks. Um, and I'm just gonna, I probably am not gonna wash my brush throughout this process. I'm gonna get all my splashes on, my splashes and my drips, and then I'm gonna use the butt end of my um, brush to do, to pull out some scratch marks. <laughs> You'll see, it's a fancy technique. All right, so here I go. I, oh, I'm i gonna start with some of my green and you can see here, I can actually flick it like this and it gets all these really cool squiggly marks and I'm concentrating on the hair area, um, but 
what's going to happen naturally is I'm going to get a whole, oops, there we go. Oops. There's no oops is an abstract. Um, once I've got this, um, when I'm doing it in the hair, yes. <laughs> I have so much fun doing this. I'm really sorry if I giggle throughout this whole process. It just, I feel like I'm, um, I don't know, like seven years old and I'm going to get in trouble by my mom because I'm, I'm making a mess everywhere, but that's what this is about. Um, so I'm just kind of flicking to get these little dots. And I was saying, you'll get these little um, carefree pops of splashes and squiggles along the edges. And you're more than welcome to wash your brush throughout the process. Um, if you really want, you know, vibrant yellow and you just had green on your brush, you can certainly wash and dry it, but you can, you can tap it. I just went into some yellow, so now I'm tapping. Typically when I tap, it's gonna get a lot of um, more polka dotty kind of looks, which is totally fine. Um, you'll see when we go to do the scratches, that will um, make it a little bit different. And when I flick it, that's where I'm gonna get like those stringy kind of marks. So I'm totally gonna do a ton of this. So <laughs> watch out. And I am um, totally spraying my cameraman right now. I hope he's wearing his, his shield. <laughs> but may, hopefully he doesn't mind that he's gonna have paint splattered all over his shoes right now. <laughs> That's that's his, um, I don't know, um, cat, what's the word I'm looking for? When you have hazard, work, work hazards. I just am picking up some pink and I'm gonna get some of that on there. Oh, I'm even up on my tippy toes to do this so I can get it nice and, I like the stringy parts. I like the, the, the polka dots too, but I really like, so when I do this, I'm getting bigger clumps to it and you'll find your rhythm. You just, you know, get as much as you want. She looks like she's going to a, a party in 1982 with all of these colors on here. I might've worn something that has these colors on it when, uh, back in 1982. Oh my god, this is so much fun. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing white in a minute, too And again, I like these stringy pieces And because we have our paint kind of watered down um, Or thinned out what's gonna happen when we go it um, It will stay wet for a little while. So when we go to um, do our sh our scratch marks, which we'll do in a minute um, it'll still be wet for us. So I just picked up some white. So I went from green to pink to yellow. Now I'm going to white. And you can certainly go in a different order if you want to. Um, totally up to you. But you can see I'm just kind of dotting it like this to get a whole bunch of, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm spraying everywhere. So glad I have a dedicated space to, to make art in. All right. Oh, oh yes, I'm gonna get some <laughs> some stringy marks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. All right, so I've got my stringy marks. I've got great coverage over this. Now what I'm gonna to start to do, I think I've got as much as I want. Mm, yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna use the, the butt end of my brush and I'm just gonna to start to pull it in the direction of the hair. So this is gonna bring some of these colors to kind of merge together. I'm not gonna do it on the um, on the body because I really like that polka dotty kind of look that's that it's got going. And once you've done as many of these streaks as you want to, if you find that you've got other areas that you want more color in or you want more of anything in, you can certainly go back and start splashing and dripping and whatever you want to again. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of keep pulling these out. You could even add black to it or, oh yeah, let's get some, some fun extra ones coming out over here on the side. Um, and you can leave some of the little puddles if you want to. This is this is your piece. You make it as you know as streaky as you want. You can see I'm pulling some on top or in a little bit different of a direction, so that gives it. Uh, you know, it's clearly going in a circular kind of way, but you can pull them over one another, one another, so that works there. And I've still got some of these stringy pieces. Ah, oh, this looks great. All right, so. I think I'm gonna call it. I think this looks awesome. I like this little piece here. And we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got all these little streaks and, and splashes, you can uh, wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the final step, which is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I am gonna sign this one, I think, in the bottom right. I do my initials, but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol. Maybe you could hide your, your signature in her hair somewhere. You do whatever you'd like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your wild whipping hair lady. <laughs> I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.